crisis development. I, and Urban talked about how you know, he got beat for a sack early in the Michigan State game, and he thought, uh, just like early in the year, he thought, uh, but then he got it together. Could you describe his development this year? Yeah, he's uh, a young player who's got a lot of talent and uh, just continues to get better and better, work at the game. Um, a lot of it is just experience and confidence. Um, yeah, he he got beat, uh, you know, there in the Michigan State game. You know, there was an open receiver. The ball could have gotten off quickly, but we held it. We didn't throw it and then ended up eating it and, and taking a sack. So there's a combination of things on every sack that, you know, occurs that it's not just a guy, but he didn't execute well enough on that particular play. But, uh, you know, overall he's starting to play well and played his best game of the season so far. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you hope that the off the line would develop this? Absolutely. Season? Yeah, that was uh, what we needed to do, what we had to do. We had no choice. Um, but that comes with time, you know. Everybody wants a finished product three weeks before the first day of training camp opens in August. And unfortunately, that's not really how it works. You know, I mean, and we're starting to play well as a full team at all positions. We're starting to get confidence. We have a lot of young guys playing and uh, or inexperienced guys if they're not young. So the whole thing's starting to come together kind of as we planned when we need it to. Uh, front row left, Lori. Jacoby Bourne. Um, Urban Meyer said he leads in his own way. I wonder what is unique about his leadership style, maybe. Well, Jacoby leads by uh, example, and that's a often used phrase, but how he practices, how he competes, how he works the game. I mean, you talk, who was the first guy in here today on their off day, watching film, working out, getting a, tr getting, his body right, you know, with some training room work, Jacoby Bourne. You know, everybody kind of knows that he'll be the first guy to show up in here. He'll watch extra film. He'll understand what's going on, uh, Try, you know, as a communicator in the games. But then he's, he's playing extremely well right now at a high level. He's very physical. So we're getting everything out of him that we can, and, and that's really good. That's why they call me coach. <laughs> That's my job. I mean, help guys go where they can't take themselves. My job as a coach is to take players where they can't take themselves. So if they're willing to work hard, to train, to listen, to be coached, then we help them get that last step. And it's like I said, it's a combination of how we practice, how we prepare, how we teach. And then uh, are they willing to take that, absorb it, and then they, can they take it to the field? And experience helps you take that to the field because all those things were in place early, but it takes a while to learn how to take what you practice and how you train and your mind and your body and take it to the field. So it's starting to occur on the field, and uh, that's, that's our expectation for those guys. Coach, uh, Daryl Baldwin, that must remind a lot of people of the Reed Fragle situation two years ago. I'm curious, uh, from your standpoint, which one of those guys had further to go? I know both Reed was a tight end, whereas Daryl was a defensive lineman, but both coming you know, coming, to, coming of age as a senior at right tackle. Just which one of those guys had further to go? Um, that's hard to quantify. I've never thought of it that way, so I mean, I'd have to think about that for a second. But uh, they both had uh, things that they had to do to get where they're at. And both of them were willing to do it. So once again, it takes a player willing to accept coaching and learn and, and apply what he's being taught. And those guys are great examples of that, that it's never too late for your career to blossom. And that if you're willing to do things within the framework of our program, that you can be successful. So, uh, you know, Daryl moving over from a defensive lineman, you know, he had to learn offensive line fundamentals, offensive line terminology. Reed knew that to some degree, but we were, it was a new system when we got here, so everything was really new, I mean, other than playing offense and then going to offensive line. So instead of on passes going out, he had to learn to go backwards and block. So, I mean, there was a big transition for both of them, to be honest with you. How would you say he's playing this year, Daryl? 
very consistently at a high level for us. I mean, he's playing about as well as we would have thought he could play. I mean, he's playing at a high end level for us. Already asked about Jacoby Bourne. A quick follow up on that. Uh, early in the season, Urban Meyer used to always say, you know, he's very tough. He knows the he knows the offense well, but he always would mention he's undersized. I mean, every time we talk, he say, but he's undersized. Is that no longer an issue? Is he now physically? No, stylish? he's still the same size. But, you know, I mean, <laughs> strength, strength wise, though, is that no longer an issue where you know? It wasn't like an issue before. Just he he is what he is. You know, I mean, he's undersized. You know, um, as far as. Maybe the prototype offensive lineman at places like Ohio State, but that all that isn't always a measuring stick. You know, as measurables don't determine how good a player are. Measurables are just measurables. They're something that people can measure that don't really understand players or what it takes to win and be successful. Um, you could be six eight and be a bad tackle, and you can be six three and be a great tackle. I've had six three tackles that were really good and tall ones that weren't very good. I've had really tall centers that weren't very good and short centers that were really good. So being a good player is based on being a good player, executing what you have to do. Jacoby will always be undersized as long as he plays at Ohio State. Um, how well he does his job is getting better and better, so that's refreshing. So we always remind him of that, too, when he makes champion, that you're still short and you're still whatever you are, but you're a competitor, you're a winner, you're – a team guy and a leader and playing at a high level. Uh, Fred Rorick, Tim? Tim? Yeah, Ed, you, have, you have a good uh, view of this. Ezekiel Elliott's rise, how would you describe Ezekiel Elliott in a nutshell? Uh, just the way he plays, what does he bring to the table from your vantage point? Uh, he uh, plays with great energy. He's very explosive. I think he has extremely good vision, you know, so his vision is an asset because that's something that you try to train backs to read the blocking patterns in front of them, see the leverage on the blocks. He does it instinctively um, and then explodes into open seams. And he's very aggressive blocker, too. When he doesn't have the ball, he's always attacking somebody on defense and blocking. So his rise, I think, is those. a lot of those traits were kind of in him. Stan Drayton's developed them to the max, and he's playing at a high level just because he loves football and plays every snap like it's his last snap. And if he's not running the ball, he's trying to do something to help somebody else who's running the ball or throwing the ball. So he's uh, – it's been fun to watch. I mean, it's exciting to see him because when he gets the ball, it's dangerous. You know how you, sometimes though, you look at players, you go, will, will they function in like this setting, so to speak? Uh, does he kind of fit your eye on a player who could – carry the ball, so to speak, in tough situations on Saturday, maybe in snow, who knows, in cold weather. Does he kind of fit that? Uh, I think he's the perfect back for our offensive system, you know, because I think he has the power and the toughness to run inside. He has the speed and explosiveness to run outside. So he gives us a, a dual threat. You don't have to substitute him out and say he's your inside power back and here's another guy who's your outside back. He has that great combination of size, speed, and power to be both. And uh, so I think he's a prototype for our, our offensive system. And last question, Todd? It, this is more of a co-offensive coordinator question, but as a game is playing out Saturday night, was there a point where you guys felt like you could call anything offensively and, and feel confident that your guys would execute it and it would work? Um, well, we had great confidence in our players playing at a high level as the game progressed. But we were still very selective and very smart in what we were trying to do and how we were trying to do it because we're playing a good defense. And, you know, we had strategically planned out what we wanted to run and where we wanted to run it. So we just had to make sure we stayed with that plan and then try to keep them off balance enough to not become predictable. But, yeah, we didn't get to the point where we were just dialing up any play we wanted. We were – very specific and had game planned exactly how we wanted to attack them. And I thought uh, Tom did a great job of calling the plays. And I thought that, uh, you know, Coach Meyer's involved in that. I have a little bit of involvement in that. I mean, I'm more involved before the series or pregame and things like that during the week, during the actual series. It's Tom and Coach Meyer. Um, and that was fabulous, the job that they did calling the plays at the times 
but uh, we stuck to a plan. We didn't just start ad libbing and start. We we were pretty set on how we wanted to attack them. We just stuck with it. You guys had seen some surprises from defenses having two weeks to prepare for you. Did you see less of that Saturday night? Uh, yeah, Michigan State was pretty much what we thought, what we had prepared for. They they were uh, they're a good defensive team. They've been very successful, and they have a plan of how they want to do business. And uh, they did what we thought they'd do when we went into the game. And there wasn't a lot of difference to that. 